This is video podcast 13 from learningradiology.com, Three Ways to Slice Pie, Part 2. Hello, I'm William Herring from Albert Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. This is the second of a two-part podcast on three ways to slice P-I-E, pie. These are diseases that do not share a common etiology or even similar imaging findings, but do share the same abbreviation. The last time we talked about pulmonary interstitial edema. In this podcast, we're going to talk about pulmonary interstitial emphysema and pulmonary infiltrates with eosinophilia, two more pieces of the pie. Pulmonary interstitial emphysema is a disease of newborns. They're almost always premature. They almost always have respiratory distress syndrome, hyaline membrane disease, and they virtually always are on a ventilator. It usually occurs on day two or three after birth. The earlier that it presents, the more ominous the sign. The air in pulmonary interstitial emphysema is actually in the lymphatics, and it may appear as very small bubbles of air on the chest radiograph or have a streaky appearance. It is a frequent precursor to the development of a pneumothorax, sometimes a pneumomediastinum or even a pneumopericardium. This is an example of a premature newborn with pre-existing hyaline membrane disease who developed pulmonary interstitial emphysema. And you can see in the close-up that there are numerous small air bubbles that represent the pulmonary interstitial emphysema. This is another child who had severe and extensive respiratory distress syndrome who developed pulmonary interstitial emphysema and then developed this right-sided pneumothorax, which is indicated by the black arrows. Pulmonary infiltrates with eosinophilia is the last piece of the pie. This is a group of diseases affecting the major airways or the lung parenchyma which are associated with either blood or tissue eosinophilia or both. Eosinophilic lung disease can be classified by the clinical severity of the disease. Leffler syndrome has a relatively mild course. A somewhat more intermediate course occurs with eosinophilic pneumonia, and some of the more severe reactions are seen with hypersensitivity angiitis and polyiderotis nodosa. Eosinophilic lung disease can also be classified by etiology. It can be idiopathic, it can be associated with a specific etiology, or it can be associated with connective tissue diseases or vasculitides. The idiopathic forms of eosinophilic lung disease include Leffler syndrome, acute eosinophilic pneumonia, and chronic eosinophilic pneumonia, and hyper eosinophilic syndrome. We're just going to talk about Leffler syndrome. Usually patients who develop Leffler syndrome have a history of atopy. They may be asymptomatic or highly symptomatic with the disease. The symptoms are usually fever and shortness of breath. The disease does tend to run a somewhat mild course most of the time. It is associated with blood eosinophilia and biopsies will also show eosinophils in the parenchymal opacities. The classical imaging finding in Leffler syndrome is called reverse pulmonary edema because the opacities are along the lateral chest wall instead of close to the hyla. The airspace opacities can be single or multiple. They are frequently transitory in nature and the reduction in the size of one opacity with the appearance of a second is suggestive of Leffler syndrome, especially with eosinophilia being present. This is an example of Leffler syndrome. The red arrows are pointing to airspace opacities which are arranged along the lateral chest wall, sparing the hyalur regions and affecting the outer aspect of the lung, the reverse of pulmonary edema. Eosinophilic lung disease can also be associated with a specific etiology, and some of the etiologies include nitrofurantoin, penicillin, sulfonamides amongst the drug-induced, parasite-induced such as ascariasis, paragonomiasis, strongyloidiasis, and tropical eosinophilia, and fungal-induced such as occurs with allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. The drug-induced eosinophilic lung diseases 
fall into two major patterns. They're either interstitial edema. This is seen with the urinary tract antiseptic nitrofurantin, furidantoin, or they can be patchy, fleeting airspace opacities, such as is seen with penicillin, sulfonamides, and hydrochlorothiazide. This is an example of a reaction to nitrofurantoin, uridantin. There is basically pulmonary interstitial edema present, and the findings will disappear shortly after removal of the inciting agent. Eosinophilic lung disease can also be associated with connective tissue disease or vasculitis. The connective tissue diseases that have been implicated include rheumatoid disease, Wegener's granulomatosis, allergic granulomatosis, and polyarteritis nodosa. This is an example of Wegener's granulomatosis. You should think of Wegener's when you see multiple nodules of varying sizes, most of which have cavities, especially if they extend over a period of time. The cavity in the left upper lobe is thick wall and has an air fluid level. The cavity in the right mid lung is thin walled. So cavities thick and thin walled are seen with Wegener's. To recap, RE diseases that all share the acronym PI, P-I-E, are pulmonary interstitial edema. Remember to look for fluid in the fissures, curly B lines, pleural effusions, and peribronchial cuffing. Pulmonary interstitial emphysema, which occurs in premature newborns, almost all of whom have hyaline membrane disease and who have been on a ventilator. There are small bubbles of air that are seen throughout the lungs. And pulmonary infiltrates with eosinophilia. There can be multiple causes, as we've seen. The airspace opacities with pulmonary infiltrates with eosinophilia tend to be fleeting or transitory. They may be the reverse of pulmonary edema and laterally placed in the lung. So here's your mini quiz. Use the pause control on your MP3 player or computer. Here is an example of one of the forms of PIE. This is a four day old. Pause the player, decide what you think it is. And if you said that you thought this represented pulmonary interstitial emphysema with multiple small bubbles of air throughout the lungs, you would be correct.